most of my config labs take you 10 or 15 minutes. Not this one. It's going to take you probably 45. Why is that? I designed it to cover most everything that you'll bump into in Volume 1, Part 3 of my books. So, VLANs, VLAN trunks, spanning tree, ether channel, and a few other small things thrown in. So, it's a pretty big lab. So, let me set it up for you in this video, and then you can jump in and get busy doing the lab. This lab is best done after you complete part three of the current volume one book. So the last chapter in that part currently is chapter 10. That's the chapter on implementing spanning tree. The short version, you need, you need to be through the chapters on VLANs and spanning tree before attempting this lab. All right. So the labs themselves are contained in blog pages on my blog, searchskills.com. And each of those labs begins with a description of what to do in the lab, the scenario and tasks at the top. Then a very short little slice, it says, hey, pause and do the lab. And the labs are set up to be done on paper or with Cisco Packet Tracer, and in some cases with CML, although that's not true of this lab. There are too many devices to do them in CML free, so I didn't set it up to be done with CML. Then the bottom half of the blog page gives the answer, as well as an explanation as to why I think that answer is appropriate. Now, to make it a richer experience for this lab, I've made an intro video, that's this video, and a review video that's also available and released this same day. So what's in this lab? Well, we have a traditional four switch network with two distribution layer switches and two access layer switches. The access layer switches have some PCs connected to it, and I've got a router here. Now, in sequence in the course, we haven't gotten into depth about how to configure the router so it can route packets. And these four PCs are spread across two different VLANs and two different IP subnets. So I've pre-configured the PCs and the router so they'll work. And we're focusing on VLANs and spanning tree and ether channel and VLAN trunks with these four switches in the middle. So those are the topics. I've mentioned them before. It's all the configuration you would have seen in part three of the book. The lab itself, you can find it directly at this URL that ends in CLAB 353. You can go to that page now and get started, but I'll give you a little bit more about what the top half of the page will tell you to do if you'd like to see that next. So here's our topology again, and it turns out there is some initial configuration, but there's not much of anything in the four switches. The initial configuration is for the things that I don't want you to configure at all in this lab. So we'll focus on that here for the next minute or so. As I mentioned before, router R1 is ready to route. Not only am I pre-configuring it, I don't expect you to go figure out what it means, all right? So just take it on faith that it's configured correctly. Likewise, on the four PCs, their IP settings, I don't expect you to go figure out how that works. We just haven't gotten to it in class yet. Feel free to go explore it if you'd like to try to learn more, but you don't need to do that, all right? But let me just tell you a few things about it. Those four PCs are pre-configured with IP addresses. The IP addresses of the PCs labeled A21 and B21, they're going to be IP addresses in subnet 10.1.21.0. That is, their first three octets will be 10.1.21 something. So A21, it's 10.1.21.1. B21, it's 10.1.21.2. And the router in that subnet is 10.1.21.254. You don't need to memorize that. I'm just letting you know what it is. And over here in this second subnet, A31 and B31 have IP addresses. In that subnet, 10.1.31.1, 10.1.31.2, and 10.1.31.254 there. So that's the pre-configuration. Now let's talk about things that matter to what you need to go configure. So first off, the configuration you add is going to be on those four switches, access one and two, and distribution switches one and two. So for VLANs, we're going to place A21 and B21, which we just saw are in the same subnet. They'll also then be in the same VLAN. So we're going to place them in the same VLAN, VLAN 21, and we're going to place A31 and B31 in a second VLAN, VLAN 31. Now, if you just look at the numbering there, I picked the names of A21 and B21 because they're both in VLAN 21 and the names A31 and B31 because they're both in VLAN 31. In real life, you probably wouldn't end up with such obvious numbering, but I did it in lab just to, you know, keep my sanity thinking through it. All right. So it's nice and matched up there, not trying to throw you off with the numbering. 
Okay, so we've got the endpoint devices in two different VLANs. Now, between the switches, we want all those links to trunk, so that's the little uh, rectangle around or square around a T there. We also want to trunk on the link between the two distribution switches. Now, as it's drawn with two links in this little hoop, it implies we want an ether channel there, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But any link between two switches, we want them to trunk. We'll also have trunking here between router R1 and dist1, and that's pre-configured both on the router and on dist1. And that's because the way router R1 is pre-configured to route for those two subnets, it has to use VLAN trunking between the router and dist1, all right? But that trunking is pre-configured. You'll even see a few commands there on dist1 in the pre-configuration section in the lab to that effect. But you'll have to configure trunking on all five of these other links, all right? Then it also says to make sure those trunks support only VLANs 21 and 31, that is the two VLANs we're using in lab. Now there are a lot of ways to configure VLAN trunks between switches, and we configure that with the switch port mode interface subcommand. And as I said, there are lots of options there. So the lab instructions tell you, hey, in real life you may not do this, but for this lab we want you to use as many combinations as possible. Combinations on either end of two switches. So if you use a particular combination between dist1 and access1, use a different combination between dist2 and access2, and so on. And it turns out there are enough different combinations to use a different combination on all five of those trunks that we just saw. Now for Ether Channel, the lab gives you an option to do it or not do it. So I've got two instances of drawing, and the top one I'm going to show you what to do, and in the bottom one I'm going to show you what to do to avoid doing Ether Channel. So if you embrace the idea of practicing Ether Channel, here's what you do. I tell you in lab that I'm going to use port channel interface number three on both ends. You can use any number you want, but that's the one that the answer will show. But here's why I say you might want to avoid trying to practice Ether Channel. It's just a pain in the neck in Cisco Packet Tracer to work with Ether Channels. The Packet Tracer or the, the yeah the Packet Tracer Ether Channel support uh, just doesn't work very well. So if you were to configure an Ether Channel, here's how I would recommend you do it to try to get it working. You configure it, all right, and then you save your configs with a copy running config startup config command, and then you save your Packet Tracer file with the app file save. Then you close the app itself, and then you open the Cisco Packet Tracer app again. So you've closed the app and brought it up again to try to overcome some of its problems making Ether channels work. Then you open your Packet Tracer file again in the app, and that will often overcome the problems. And the problems will be something as simple as you configure exactly correct, you get misleading error messages, and all the show commands show the incorrect status rather than the Ether channel working, all right? And it gets frustrating to make it work. So if you just follow this process, it works. Now, let's say you configured and you thought it was correct and you did this and you still couldn't get it working and you think, oh, well, maybe let me try this. Then every time you change the config and you want to test it out, save your configuration, save the packet tracer file, close packet tracer, open. Yeah, you get the idea. It's just, it's laborious. So you might think, ah, eh, it's not worth it. I'm not going to bother. So if you want to not bother, instead of using two links between the two distribution switches, shut down the second link with the interface shutdown command and just use one physical link. Make sure you turn on trunking on that. All right. But you don't have to use a port channel in that case. All right. So that's it for your ether channel requirements for lab. Then for spanning tree, here's your same old topology. The instructions say to make dist1 the root switch in VLAN 21 and dist2 the root switch in VLAN 31. And I did that only to give you a variety and make sure you can exercise the commands. Then I said make sure to use RSTP rather than STP. And then finally, on those access ports, this is pretty typical to enable port fast and BPDU guard, although the instructions kind of make it, uh, I describe the idea rather than name the features, but those are the features that the general description points to. I hope you're as excited about this new lab as I am. It's time to do the lab. There's the direct link. You've seen the intro video. Don't just go watch the review video. Do the lab. It's time to do it.
Have fun. I hope you enjoyed the lab intro. If you're ready for that lab review, click on the left, but definitely pause and go do the lab first. If you want to circle back to part review and see all the other part review tasks for this part, click on the right for that intro video to part review. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I'll talk to you soon.